Hello and welcome back. In today's session, we will look at an introduction to uh, S3 buckets. Now, S3 buckets is another storage option that we have in AWS and we can use this to store our uh, data within the uh, cloud itself. Uh, once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. So S3, it simply stands for um, Amazon uh, Simple Storage Service. And this is an object based story. That means whatever data that we store in the S3 bucket will be treated as an object. And this provides us with um, scalability, um, uh, availability of our data, security, and also better performance in terms of uh, accessing the data um, uh, in terms of your cost. So customers of all sizes and in industries can make use of this um, S3 bucket to store and protect any amount of data. So with the S3, uh, uh, um, no matter what size uh, your your company is, how much of data you have, you can use this S3 to store any amount of data you have. Uh, you can store bytes of data, you can store terabytes of data, that's, that's really up to you. And uh, this, this can be used for a wide ver a variety of uh, use cases. So we can use it for data lakes, we can use it for uh, websites, mobile applications, uh, backing up of your data, restoring the data, archiving your data for your enterprise applications, IoT devices, uh, big data analytics. So basically for any use case that you can think of, uh, we can make use of your S3 bucket to store the uh, data. We can also use it for backup purpose, like you want to keep it for years together, we can make use of your S3 bucket for that. So S3 provides us with various features which can be used to optimize organize and also we can configure the access to your data so who can access the data who cannot access the data now the whole point of this is to meet a very specific business requirements organizational requirements and your compliance requirements so we have all those features within the s3 bucket uh, we can uh, control uh, which service can access your data which users can access your data all that can be uh, configured as per your uh, requirement now Let's talk about some of the features that your S3 service provides. So when we talk about the first feature, your S3 provides with a variety of storage classes. So based on your use case, based on your requirement, um, uh, you can choose a storage class uh, based on your needs. So it, it offers a wide variety of storage classes which are defined for uh, uh, different, different use cases. So we have S3 standard, which can be used to store your mission critical production data. So basically any data that needs to be readily available, you can store that data in your S3 standard. Then we have S3 Express one zone, which can be used for your uh, frequently accessed data. Then you have S3 standard IA, IA is infrequently accessed, uh, which can help you to save cost by storing your infrequently accessed data. Then you have S3 one zone IA, which again helps you to save cost by storing your infrequently accessed data. But in case of one zone IA, your, your data will be stored only in only one availability zones. Whereas with the other options, your data will be stored in multiple availability zones. Then you have S3 Glacier Instant Retrieval. You have S3 Glacier Flexible Retrieval. And then you have the S3 Glacier Deep Archive. And all of these options can be used for archiving your data at the lowest cost. All right, so based on your use case, based on the requirement, you can choose uh, which storage class you want to use. By default, whenever we store the data in the S3 bucket, uh, S3 standard is what we use. But at any point you want to change, you can go ahead and change the storage class and accordingly you will be charged. The next feature we have is the storage management. So S3 has storage management features which can be used to manage your cost. Uh, meet your regulatory requirements, reduce the latency, and also save multiple uh, distinct copies of your data for compliance requirements. So for this, we have S3 lifecycle, we can we have S3 object logs, we have S3 replication, uh, batch operations, all of these can be used. Like for example, uh, lifecycle can be used to manage your cost uh, by automatically transitioning your data from uh, one storage class to another storage class. Uh, we can have multiple copies of your data by making use of your S3 replication and then so on. The next feature we have is your access management and uh, security. So 
uh, we can use this feature for auditing and also managing the access to your S3 buckets and also the objects that we have inside this S3 bucket. So we have S3 block public access, we have AWS IAM bucket policies, access control list, uh, S3 object ownerships and then IAM access analyzer for S3. So we can make use of all these uh, options to manage the access to your uh, data. So by default, uh, the S3 block public access does not allow us to make the objects public. Bucket policies can be used to um, uh, implement JSON policies as to who can access the data, who cannot access the data and then so on. The next feature we have is your data processing. So uh, we can use this to transform our data and also trigger workflows like triggering Lambda functions which can be used to automate a variety of other processing activities at scale. So we can trigger uh, Lambda functions and we can also make use of your event notification. So whenever you're uploading new objects, you want some actions to take place or when uh, someone deletes your data, you want some actions to take place, we can uh, do that. Then we have accessing your S3 bucket. So there are different, different ways that you can access your S3 bucket. So we can make use of the uh, console, we can make use of the CLI, we can make use of SDKs and then we can also make use of your S3 REST API. So based on your use case, uh, based on what you're comfortable with, S3 has all the options available. Mostly we'll be using the console. If you're working programmatically, we can make use of SDKs. We can also make use of REST APIs. And if you are comfortable with the command line, we can go with your CLI options. Now coming to the charge, uh, S3 charges only for the data that you are going to store. There are no hidden charges. Uh, there are no over age charges. All right. So if you are storing like, let's say 10 KB of data, you will be charged only for that. And if you're storing 10 GB of data, you'll be charged only for that. There are no hidden costs. There are no overage charges as such. So this model gives you a variable cost service that can grow with your uh, business while also giving you the advantage of your cost in terms of your AWS infrastructure. So you don't have to worry about there's no fixed charges. You'll be charged based on the amount of data that you are uh, storing in the AWS uh, S3 bucket and there's no like fixed charge uh, you have based on the uh, storage classes you have but uh, at the end of the day you'll get charged based on the amount of data that you're storing in the S3 buckets. So once again S3 buckets is another storage option that we have in AWS and we can use this to store your uh, data. So data could be any data, your application logs, configuration files, uh, your scripts, your uh, you can think of anything, all right. Anything you want to store, you can make use of your S3 buckets, and it is completely object based. It has a um, uh, it follows a file system uh, architecture, so you can have a bucket inside that bucket. You can have your folders, and then you can start storing the uh, data. In the next session, I'll be showing you how you can create your buckets. I'll also show you how you can upload your objects, and we'll talk a bit more about your S3 buckets. So that's about your introduction to your S3 buckets. That's all I have for this session. Thank you.